Hayashi, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the Sun Sukata of Ishinro. Every kata tells a story. What is the story that Sun Tzu is telling? When we look at the syllabus of Ishin Ru, Sun Tzu was created in the late 1940s. Why did Shimabuku add or feel the need to add an additional kata into his curriculum? We think we may have the answer. At least we have an interesting theory. It's our belief, a strong belief, that Shimabuku may have seen a lopsided bias in the other forms towards what we call yang expression of kata. We believe he added Sun Tzu into his syllabus to show us how to do the yin version of a yang form. Shigeru Igami was Gichin Funakoshi's senior Shotokan student. In his book, The Heart of Karate Do, Igami relates a moment where Funakoshi approaches him and tells him to open his hands throughout the course of the day. Was Funakoshi aware of the need to balance the body's energy system? Because a fist activates yang, or transmittive energy flow in the body, while an open hand activates yin, open or receptive energy. Most of you probably have some basic familiarity with the term yin and yang. We understand these terms to be interdependent yet complementary, like day and night, life and death, tall and short. How does this apply to a kata or an interpretation of a kata? When I describe a yang kata, I'm talking about, on the surface level, any movements moving away from the core outward, whether they're moving laterally or coming frontally, the arm motions or the leg techniques are moving away from the body. When I refer to a yin technique on a superficial level, I'm referring to any technique that has the limbs moving back towards the core, a drawing in action. If you look at the difference between san chin kata, the opening of san chin, and the opening of san su kata, you will see a distinct difference as is our understanding in the way the arms should be moving. San Chin is a yang double middle block action or grappling action. The arms are moving from the center away from the body. Sun Tzu is the opposite. The arms are moving out to in. They could both end up in the exact same place, but how they get there is different. And this is significant in terms of understanding how to apply kata. I'd like to take another perspective on the concept of yin and yang. I think you understand quite clearly that right now a yang movement would be anything moving away and a yin movement would be something coming back toward. And you'd be accurate on that plane if you perceived it that way. But there is another deeper level to the yin and yang that goes to the heart of Sun Tzu Kata, and that is the distribution of energy moving through the body, which some uh, Asian countries refer to as qi or qi. Um, we take the position that there is an intrinsic underlying energetic reason for Sun Tzu that has to do with this moving of the energies in the body internally versus externally, regardless of whether your hand is moving away from you or moving toward you. Because at a very high level, the energy can move opposite of the physical movement. Now, we believe that what Shimabuku was doing was not cataloging the best moves or significant moves of other kata by putting, him, by 
placing them into Sun Tzu, because if you look carefully, which we're going to do in a little bit, at the Sun Tzu Kata, you will see that movements from Sun Chin, movements from Wan Tzu, and movements from other katas are actually done on the reverse side, which to most people would be, so what, the reverse side. So you just do it on the other side the same way. But this is not true. When you reverse movements, you get a very different energy flow. And subsequently, and importantly, you get a very distinctly different um, quality to your strength, meaning you could uh, discharge or minimize your own strength effects on somebody when you're doing bunkai. And we think this is the reason why Sun Tzu was created, to show these distinctions, to show that you could take a yang kata and convert it into yin moves by reversing it, by changing the breathing, uh, with other nuances attached to it. For people who have had no familiarity with internal martial arts, I would state it this way. You cannot mix and match components from one kata to another kata. If you decide to reverse a stance or, or a uh, footwork in a form to the opposite side, or if you decide you're gonna change the way you're breathing, this can have fairly substantial consequences. You could enhance your strength if you do it correctly, or you could decrease your strength if you do it incorrectly. Let's just take a quick look at changing the breathing around or changing the arm motions around between, say, a San Chin and a Sun Tzu, because San Chin steps with the right foot forward into San Chin stance, whereas Sun Tzu steps forward with the left foot into Cezanne stance. There's a reason for this, and we're going we're gonna to take a quick look at the strength differentials when you start to mix and match. Stepping correctly and breathing correctly in the opening move of San Chin demonstrates the appropriate strength in the arms. When the student reverses the breathing, even though the physical movements themselves are performed identically, you can see a huge drop in the student's ability to resist that same press. This time, the student will step correctly into Sun Tzu. Notice his arms cannot be pressed. But watch what happens when he simply crosses his hands. An incorrect way of doing the form, he loses energy into the arms. You wouldn't think such incidental moves would have that much effect on the overall form, but it's quite the contrary, and it's the exact reason why katas were designed with such detail in mind. Let's take a look at some of the obvious moves that seem to have been borrowed from earlier katas into Sun Tzu, primarily the Wan Tzu and San Chen, possibly Cezanne kata. Those for sure. We're going to watch two members perform them side by side, so you'll get a chance to look carefully at them in the exact directions they would be facing if both individuals started the kata facing forward. I'd like to point out that uh, there's a lot of nuance in kata that, in my opinion, was not carried forward from Okinawa uh, over the last 50 years. The opposite, in fact, has occurred. We've 
mostly neutered the nuances out of the katas. And we're doing these very standardized forms. Everything on, done on the left side is done on the right side. I'm going to give you a demonstration on a diagonal of what we believe is the proper way to do the opening of Sun Chin with the double arm action versus Sun Tzu. So that you can clearly see the differences in the way the arms are moving. Most people can perform a basic bunkai with a fair degree of skill. But to perform the bunkai the way the kata was intended requires that you understand how to do the move correctly in the form before you can apply it correctly against another individual. Now, we think this is historic, the historically accurate way to perform the opening of these two katas. Your version that you're learning right now may not have made that distinction with the arms. And so you might see the opening movements of Sun Chen and Sun Tzu looking identical. We do not believe they're identical because that builds in a certain amount of redundancy in the katas. And we don't really want to be practicing the same thing in another kata and another kata and another kata. We want to take individual lessons that have some meat to them, have some breadth to them, and take those lessons apart. And they begin by looking at the nuances of how the katas are actually performed, how the individual sets are actually performed in terms of limb positioning, breathing, and stance work.